some people want to have what they consider a natural diet. And so they go to the supermarket, which is not natural mm -hmm. according to, and, and buy plant foods. But uh, they, it's, it's like a mixed approach to natural. Uh, it's very funny. So we can produce a little B12 in our saliva and a little in the lower part of our intestine. But the part in the, the lower part of our intestine is not absorbed in that area of the intestine, and in the saliva is insufficient. So those sources of vitamin B12 do not prove to be reliable. Also, you can get a little bit from dirt if you eat dirt, but if you don't I wash your plants, that. yes. <laughs> and and uh, again, it's not a reliable source. Or some people, uh, I've heard people on raw diets say, well, if I let an insect fall into my smoothie, when I'm making a smoothie, then I'll get a bit of vitamin B12. But most people don't want to eat insects, and it's not a vegan diet to do that. So there are some very funny um, choices and beliefs here. But the truth is that people on raw or vegan or vegetarian diets who do not get a reliable source of vitamin B12 eventually get in trouble. And it can take a long time. It could take one year. For an infant, it could take a few months. If an uh, infant did not have a source of vitamin B12 because they don't have stores. And for a few people, it will last, they can last 20 years. Very few people. Mm -hmm. But eventually people run out. And then the pro health problems can be very serious. They can affect the nervous system the nerves in a, an extremely serious way that's not reversible. And before that, there are minor symptoms. There's tingling in the fingers and toes and um, depression. depression and gastric problems and a difficulty walking because it affects the extremities, um, because it affects the nervous system. And so uh, it's important to uh, this, this very, very small addition of some reliable source of vitamin B12. And the sources that we have are supplements. You can be absolutely certain that you're getting the right kind of vitamin B12, a reliable source, or a fortified food. There are a few foods, such as fortified soy milks sometimes, and you may know of some others. Um, in North America, there's a nutritional yeast that is used. But the supplements turn out to be the very best. The companies make sure it's a form that we can absorb well. Now, some of the other beliefs, for example, in seaweed, it turns out to be an analog form or a similar form. It's like a vitamin B12 with no arms. You know, it doesn't, it can't work properly and can even um, interfere with the normal B12 function. So we've just made sure that this one small area is taken care of in vegetarian and vegan and raw diets. And then it works wonderfully well. People can be in good health. And how can we properly monitor the level of B12? In our well, there are a number of different tests. There are blood tests uh, for B12 levels. Uh, there are, there's a test called MMA, methylmalonic acid, uh, that is not so common in laboratories, but is possible. Uh, there's a level, a monitoring of homocysteine, which is a byproduct that rises and causes quite a bit of damage if we don't have enough vitamin B12. So there are several different tests that can be used. And in our books, Becoming Vegetarian, Becoming Vegan, Becoming Raw, we're very specific about which tests. Mm -hmm. and.